Good morning and welcome to the webinar today. It's a natural formulator's guide for color cosmetics. I'm your host, Kelly Dobos, and I'm a cosmetic chemist with over about 20 years of experience in cosmetic product development. And I'm currently also an adjunct professor teaching a course specifically in color cosmetics. Here today to help out and answer questions related specifically to color cosmetic formulation. And with that, uh, we'll get started with the rest of the introduction. I'd like to first introduce Covalo. Covalo makes beauty product development faster and easier. It's a comprehensive search platform that connects beauty brands with suppliers of ingredients, packaging, and services. Our presentation today is brought to you by Ivonic. And Ivonic is a sustainable specialties partner with a broad portfolio of ingredients, technologies, and services used to generate superior sustainability and functionality outcomes. Avonic covers active ingredients, active delivery systems, skin care, sun care, color cosmetics, hair care, skin cleansing, alternative preservation, product stability, and more. And I'd like to introduce you to today's panelists from Avonic, Brittany Wallet, Anna Howe, and Aaron King. Brittany Wallet is the marketing manager for North America's personal care business line at Ivonic. She supports regional marketing initiatives for the active ingredients and cosmetic solutions product line. Brittany received her Bachelor of Business Administration from the University of Wisconsin. Her multi multifaceted experience paired with her passion for beauty industry trends and creative concepting brings a fresh perspective to marketing at Ivonic. Anna Howe is an Applied Technology Manager for North America in the personal care business of Ivonic and at the new Business and Innovation Center in Richmond, Virginia. Anna has been with Ivonic since 1997, where her responsibilities focus on new product development, formulations, performance evaluations, test method development for claims, and technical services. Anna holds a Bachelor of Science in Chemistry. And Aaron King has been with Avonic for over 10 years in the technical division. The first seven with, were with the Cleaning Solutions group focusing on laundry applications. For the last three years, her position has been formulating a formulating chemist with Avonic's personal care, cosmetic solution, and active ingredients. Aaron worked in Avonic's interface and performance division as an intern before receiving her chemistry degree from Virginia State University. And with that, I will turn over the presentation to the team from Ivonic to talk to you about this um, very interesting, uh, con these very interesting concepts of formulating color cosmetics with natural ingredients. Thank you, Kelly. It's great to be here. Thank you, Cavallo, for hosting us. Uh, today, we will be discussing our natural formulators guide for color cosmetics. This concept was developed as a follow-up to our natural color cosmetics concept from 2021. Now with increased naturality in all formulations, all meeting the ISO norm, and many are aligned with the standards of Cosmos and Nature Natural as well. Today we will be sharing our up-to-date market reporting on the color cosmetics market, the perceptions of the word natural in cosmetics, and define standards. And then we will share with you our inspiring new and natural formulations, each with their own um, special performance testing. Now I will be turning off my camera. Um, I will be back at the end for a live question and answer session, but want to save bandwidth as much as I can. Now jumping in, I would first like to give an overview of the color cosmetics industry at large. The color cosmetics industry was hit hard in 2020 as a result of the pandemic. But by 2022, the market was performing almost to where it was pre-COVID-19. We now anticipate continual growth over the next several years. In fact, the compound annual growth rate from 2022 to 2026 is just over 7%. Color cosmetics was one of the hardest hit industries by COVID-19, but we are seeing a bold comeback. Simultaneously, when we look into the market for natural and organic personal care, we can see substantial growth in the next 10 years. The organic cosmetics market is expected to be valued at $20.5 billion in 2023, 
It's expected to grow at a compound annual growth rate of roughly 5% during the forecast period, resulting in an anticipated revenue from sales to surpass over $33.7 billion by 2023. When looking at data on natural products, it's important to note that each source may have unique definitions of the word and specifying how natural is natural due to lack of federal regulation around neutrality in most part of the globe is difficult. Based on the percentage of products claiming to be natural in various cosmetic categories, a couple observations can be made. Multi-use products have seen the greatest percent change in the last five years at 168% growth. This supports a rising trend around simplifying makeup and minimalizing skincare routines. Mascara products have also seen a steep incline in naturality. Mascara can be a challenge to formulate naturally and maintain safe, long-lasting, and water-resistant results, but the data shows this category catching up to others. Lip products, concealers, blush, and powder are also seeing steady growth. Nearly 50% of all foundation and liquid illuminators make natural claims in 2022. As we see the increase in natural claims within color cosmetics, we are also seeing that consumers are willing to pay more for them. Natural claims are becoming must-haves. More than 28% of all color cosmetics had natural claims in 2022, but the need for natural is especially true in premium products. Nearly half of premium products had natural claims in 2022. What do you think is contributing to this growth? Thank you, Kelly. Consumers are willing to spend more of their discretional spending on premium products that offer natural ingredients for their self-care and for the environment. In fact, over half of consumers across the US, UK, and Australia have stated that they are willing to pay more for sustainable brands and products. Likewise, as we look more at the desires of global consumers, we see that 30% of female makeup users in the UK would choose a natural form formula over its counterpart. 34% of Thai females have already replaced a beauty product with its natural variation. We are also seeing a strong desire for these natural products to maintain their performance. 82% of adults in France believe natural formulas should have as high of quality as regular products. The decision consumers have often been faced with is the trade-off between natural or high performing. In Italy, almost 60% of females said they will choose the longer lasting product over other benefits. But we ask, why not have both natural and high functioning color cosmetics? Looking into the current state of color cosmetics, I'd like to share five certified natural cosmetics representing various trends. Consumers continue to value sustainable, eco-friendly, and cruelty-free products. Ilya's Balmy Gloss Tinted Lip Oil looks to protect and revive both the skin and the earth through the use of select botanicals, giving lips a fuller feel and glossy sheen. Consumers are looking to minimize their skincare and makeup routines. Packing multiple benefits into one product is a sure way to meet this need. This revealer skin improving foundation does this well by acting as skincare, foundation, and SPF 25 all in one. Likewise, multifunctional and convenient products are rising in cosmetics. This supernatural multi-use blush made with plant-based ingredients is perfect for hydrating and adding a flush of color to both the cheeks and the lips. Natural ingredients should also meet the needs of many with a range of skin tones and modularities. This radiant loose powder by Nude by Nature does this well as it adapts naturally to a very broad range of skin tones and leaves a flawless complexion for all. Lastly, as mentioned, the demand for high performing and long lasting products remains imperative. This vegan avocado waterproof mascara uses Mamian avocado oils to kickstart lash growth in addition to providing brilliant smudge proof lashes. Thanks, Brittany. That's very informative. Now that we have a better view on the current state of the color cosmetics market, could you take a deeper dive into the complexities of defining what is natural? In addition to the difficult decision over a performing product or a natural formulation, consumers have also been faced with the challenge of 
deciding what is natural in the first place and how do we know if it is natural. More consumers are looking closely at product packaging and ingredients as represented by the 60% of Indonesian females. Over half of Brazilians are asking for transparency around this ingredient information and 45% of American females are looking for clean ingredients. The question remains, how do you know what is clean, natural, and if it's transparent? In the US, the response to defining clean beauty was broad, but natural and eco-friendly topped the list. With that in mind, there are many perceptions around what makes a product natural. Does the formulation contain mostly natural ingredients? or does it contain only natural ingredients as believed by 48% of consumers in the UK? Within the cosmetics market, we can say there are nature-inspired cosmetics, those with some, and natural and organic cosmetics, which contain almost nearly completely natural ingredients. To differentiate natural from nature-inspired, um, we can look to natural certification standards, which provide clear and transparent definitions. That's good to know, Brittany. Thank you. Anna, maybe you can tell us a bit more about the certification bodies that help define natural product standards for the cosmetics industry. Thank you. Um, I want to start off. Brands are really having uh, increased uh, challenges because of the eco-consumers. Uh, and this really is re redefining um, what they're considering natural and organic. Now, there's a greater emphasis on um, what is used in their daily products. Now, because of this, you see on this slide, there are several um, governing bodies that have emerged. Um, some of these could be Cosmos, Natru, uh, MPA Natural Seal. Um, Environmental Working Group, USDA Organic, um, just to name a few. Now, uh, the ones that uh, we will be focusing on in today's discussion um, is Cosmos Natural, Natru, and then finally the ISO 16128. Anna, if I may add a little detail here to your and Brittany's points, um, from the Covalo side, We've been observing that um, keeping a, a sustainability score is no longer optional. Uh, consumers dis demand substantiated sustainability. Uh, so brands are under like growing scrutiny to prove that their products are worth buying in every dimension possible from price points to their environment and social impact to every claim expected to be backed by data, efficacy results, certifications, or uh, ideally all of the above. Um, and it's interesting to see that brands are heavily matching up to the demand. Uh, globally, the um, natural has had the highest search volume among any cosmetic sustainability claim by the end consumer. And on Covalo, natural remains the most used filter by brands. Uh, more than one in every four searches related to the to to sustainability. Uh, claims is is a natural search, uh, and Cosmos is also by far the one with the highest search volume of all certifications that we see on Covalo. Um, so I'm I'm really interested to know more now. Can you can you tell us more more about the approach at Ivani Kana? Uh, yes. So um, I'd like to just go through our approach um, for this concept. And here, what we did is we focused on uh, three different pillars. So the first being the ISO 16128, um, which is actually an ISO norm. Um, and it does have a two uh, part uh, approach. The first being um, the definition of the ingredient categories, the second, um, is a procedure on how to calculate the overall naturality. Um, uh, the next two areas are certifications. Uh, so the first is Cosmos Natural and Natru. Now these both really have very common um, overlapping principles looking at the origin and the processing of the materials, uh, the composition of the end product um, are both regulated. 
storage, manufacturing, packaging, and environmental policies. Um, labeling and marketing also overlaps. Now for Cosmos, um, what we uh, have here is a minimum of 98% naturality um, or natural derived ingredient with only 2% um, allowed of petrochemical moieties. Now Natru also has certified ingredients, but um, the requirement for the amount of natural versus the um, amount derived natural substances um, varies depending on the formulation type. So for the next uh, samples that you'll see, this is this is the Vonix approach. Um, now, um, like I said, when we were developing our systems, we took into consideration three targets to fulfill natural. And uh, we use the ISO 16128 and industrial norm for naturality. And we really believe um, using this guideline speaks to our natural based customers. In our concept, we targeted again a 98% NOI. However, in uh, many of the cases, we were able to achieve 100% NOI. Now, all of the systems we're going to be showing you are Cosmos Natural. And um, Two of, of the full composition are Natru Natural Cosmetics. Now this overview slide um, lists each um, colored cosmetic system um, with the ISO 1628 calculation. Um, and you can see um, we really were able to achieve a very high percentage. Um, as along with the Cosmos and Natru. Now the materials or the uh, formulas that are bolded are the ones that we're going to focus on today. Um, so let's jump right in. So to get you started, um, I wanted to point out on your natural journey, I really wanted to point out that within Avonic, we have our Caretain toolbox. Uh, to help you identify products within our portfolio that can meet your formulation needs. Now, <clears throat> all of our products, we have calculated the ISO 16128 uh, indices, um, and we share all of the Natru and Cosmos um, status points um, that we have. Now, you can select your criteria that is most important to you. Um, and then all of this information uh, can be downloaded directly to your computer. So again, we are really trying to make natural and sustainability transparent. Okay, so I want to take a closer look at the key ingredients that you're going to be seeing today. Now, under our emulsifier category, we are focusing on our sustainable polyglycerin technologies. Now this backbone and geometry um, is not only natural, uh, but it is also sustainable. It's, it's also versatile. Because we can have different uh, backbone additions, we can create water and oil, as well as oil and water chassis designs. Now the Isoland 17 mass balance and the Iceland GPS are examples of water and oil technologies. And the Tego Care PBS6 mass balance is an example of oil and water. Now under our sensory and texture additives, I'm really excited to share a new film former, our Tego Filmstar 1. Um, now this product um, enhances wearability um, for our active consumers. So um, compared, this is really a, a, a game changer. Now our Dermafeel Viscolid um, really lets us create many different textures uh, to really excite the consumer. And our, our Tegofeel C10 not only helps us to maintain a matte appearance, but also is a perfect alternative to talc and microplastics such as nylon. 
Now, our enzymatic emollient portfolio aids in the in-use properties, such as pigment wetting, color trueness, and plate time. Now, under our active ingredients, uh, we've leveraged our botanical product to support skin tone evening. And then finally, our product protection ingredients um, not only protect our systems, but also protect our skin. Here's a complete list of our natural cosmetic systems that we developed. There are a total of seven systems in this concept, but we will focus on just a few of them due to time purposes. So let's jump right in and have a look at our first system, our Natural Perfection Primer. This system that we would like to share with you features our oil and water emulsifier, TegoCare PBS6MB, in combination with our enzymatically derived emollients. Our Dermafil Sensov MB is a medium polar emollient, which exhibits good spreadability and in return provides a very light skin feel with minimal residue. Pegatumarone adds benefit in supporting the skin's own formation of oxidative defense systems and improves overall radiance and evenness of skin tone. Lastly, we would like to bring your attention to the color pigment combination of chlorophyllin and Colorona Majestic Green. This natural combination provides a green base that is highly effective at altering the appearance of irritated red skin, as you will see in the next slide. Now, I would like to show you how effective our natural perfection primer is. In this series of photos, you see starting on the far left is the panelist's hands before application. You can clearly see the redness. In the center picture, you will see the primer being applied. And finally, the after picture showing that the skin appears to have less redness and a more even skin tone. This primer may be used by itself to correct skin color or used to prime your skin for the application of your foundation. Now I want to share why we chose Tego Tumorone as a natural skin tone modulator. Tumeric is a plant in the ginger family and has been used in the Ayurvedic medicine for thousands of years to detoxify and cleanse the body and to provide a glow or luster to the skin. Other well-known benefits are that tumorones provide significant antioxidant activity, induces indigenous cellular defense mechanisms against oxidative stress, and decreases wrinkle depth. Thank you, Erin. The next system is our Natural Protection Foundation. Now, looking at this formula, I want to point out uh, that this is a water and oil system using our Iceland GPS. Um, but this also uses our new all natural film star. So Tego Film Star 1 is being being used um, uh, um, at a relatively uh, efficacious level. And I also want to show that we pair this with our enzymatic emollient, our Tegasoft DC and AC. Now, both of these are, are very good pigment wetters, which helps the overall system maintain the flowability. Now, to address long-term um, uh, skin tone modulation, here we've chosen from our uh, ceramide family, our phytophingazine. Um, this has uh, calms the skin and actually helps keep the microflora in check. Now, now I'd like to really talk and show you a little more about our film star. So as I said earlier, I am super excited about this material. This is our first 100% bio-based, um, um, biodegradable material. It's fully based on renewable resources. Um, the typical use level that we recommend for enhanced wearability is 1.5. Um, the melt point is uh, also uh, very appropriate for most uh, hot, hot systems. Um, and because of its versatility, we can see this being used in sun care, uh, sports-related formulations, daily care for, with sun protection. And then finally, how we approach um, using this is with makeup. 
and really providing, providing a very nice wear resistancy. Now I'd like to show you um, our sensory comparison. Now, historically, when I would add a film former, it would always um, affect the stick, the, the system um, by adding some attributes that were not so positive, meaning uh, stickiness or, or um, waxiness. You see here that we've made uh, our foundation with and without the Tego Film Star One. And you can see overall the shape of the sensory curve at time zero and at five minutes are almost identical. So here we can clearly state that the Tego Film Star One does not add stickiness, oiliness, or even waxiness to the formulation. Now let's have a look at our SIR system are naturally infallible loose sleek powder. This system was optimized in use properties by using our natural cellulose Tegafil C10 instead of microplastics and carefully selected natural powders plus a booster for flow aids. It contains botanical hints from Tega Natural Citrus and our Tega Tumoroon, which both add onto the consumer's experience of this natural setting powder's already impressive flowability for assurance of easy application, which you will see on the following slide. So for easy to apply powders like this, we wanted to quantitatively test the powder flowability. We used this method throughout the development to make sure we optimized the end-use property from our composition design. And we also compared our systems against market benchmarks, just to, to be sure we are targeting the right standard for this formula. So you can see here that our setting powder is parallel in performance to bare minerals setting powder. Last but certainly not least, our final system that we would like to share with you, our Natural Satin multi -bomb. The Natural Satin multi -bomb is an anhydrous system. The Dermosyl Viscolid MB is the key ingredient for this in-use properties. It stabilizes the balm and provides self-leveling manufacturing ease. Pleasant texture and in-use properties create around best-in-class natural water oil emulsifier Isolin 17 MB and supported by Dermafil Sensolve MB and Tegafil C10. We also have our lipophilic emollient Tegasoft CR, which has a melting point at body temperature. All of these in combination are perfect solutions for a quick touch-up or a total makeover. So let's get into the performance of the Dermafil Viscolid. I actually tried to formulate with and without Viscolid just in order to see for myself. Clearly Viscolid highly supports a mattifying finish as you can see in the chart for makeups. And it also additionally stabilizes the system with its thickening properties and stabilization of oils. You can also see in the picture that the viscolid helps to inhibit cineresis, which minimizes the appearance of wrinkles in the skin, which at my age is a huge plus. Thank you, Anna and Erin. And I want to thank the rest of our natural color cosmetics team, including our global colleagues in Europe and Brazil, for helping us formulate these inspiring concept products and for all the work that they did on this. And now I will pass things back to Kelly to help us answer any questions live or from the chat. You know, thank you very much, Brittany, Anna, and Aaron for your presentation. I, I think you really touched on a lot of important topics for us formulators out there in meeting the demands of consumers who want natural products, but they don't want to compromise on performance characteristics. 
meeting all of these uh, different certifications to to make naturalness claims. And then, um, you know, other matters like improving long wear properties, removing talc and microplastics from formulations. So I, I've really been impressed with the work that you guys have done here. And I bet our, our viewers have a lot of questions. So I would like to start taking questions from the chat. So uh, just a reminder that you can enter any questions in the chat and we will take those um, as they come in. But we're also going to start with a few of the questions we had submitted in advance. And to get started, we will I'll start with a question here from um, Rebecca. And the question here is the color payoff for extract based pig pigments is mineral. How can that be improved without adding synthetics or iron oxides? Um, first, I'd, I'd like to I'll start with a discussion on the difference between what is a pigment and what is what we refer to as a dye. And I'm just talking here about um, colorants in color cosmetics, not hair dyes. A pigment is a solid particle and a dye would be something that's soluble in the medium it's, in which it's used. And so a natural base extract is going to behave like a dye because it's soluble. So it gives you transparent color. Whereas a pigment that's a particle is going to give you opacity. And that opacity is what gives you color payoff. And payoff is what we, we look for when we create a lipstick or a nail polish or an eyeshadow. So unfortunately with an extract based color additive, you're really not going to get to that level of payoff you desire with, um, that you would get with a, a pigmented product. So um, I hope that answers that question. Um, next uh, on the question list, we have, um, let's see here. Uh, there are those who criticize iron oxides are not natural because they are not plant-based. Uh, what is your stance on this? So I guess, I guess that's a particular question for me. Um, I would suggest that anytime you're working with colorants in cosmetics that you review the regulations of the market in which you're going to sell them. And that's because the regulations often define the pigments you're permitted to use, sometimes the concentrations of those pigments and the source of those, those pigments. And in the case of iron oxides, I can say in the United States that the uh, regulation specifically states that iron oxides are synthetically prepared. Um, so even though that they're not sourced from plants, they are still, uh, they are uh, synthetically prepared. Um, and I would, you know, suggest that if you uh, look into the manufacture of the iron oxides, you will find that they may be naturally, naturally derived, uh, but they are synthetically prepared according to the regulation. So I hope that answers that question. Um, we did have one question that I wanted to address about the presentation. Someone asked about um, eyeliners being represented. And I think this is in, in a uh, chart that was on maybe slide five in the presentation. Um, it, eyeliners are on the right side of the graph there. So if you get a copy of the presentation, you'll be able to find that later. Um, and on to our next question. Um, let's see what we've got coming in here on the, the chat. And so here we go. Here's one for the Ivonic team. What is the recommended usage level of Tigo Filmstar 1MB? Um, I can take this question. Um, so we normally, we try to stick with whatever we have claim substantiations for. So for Tego Film Star 1 MB, the recommended use level is 1.5%. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, and um, we have another question here that is, um, most cosmetic brands have a lot of preservatives like parabens, EDDA, and BHT on their blacklists. I would like to know what are some natural alternatives. Um, so I don't know if anyone from Ivonic wants to to add to this, but I would um, I would start with saying that there are very few good natural preservatives that we can use in the cosmetics industry. Um, sometimes people want to work with natural extracts. 
Um, but these uh, materials can often also be sources of allergens. So they're not necessarily ideal either, or they have a, a high level of odor that they give to a formula. I think it really requires looking at the system you're working in and looking at what we call hurdle technologies. If there's any way to minimize the use of synthetic preservatives that you can, but it really is important to ensure that your product is going to be well preserved and stable over the course of shelf life and consumer use. Kelly, I have a, a couple comments on that. I, I agree with you. I think you really need to look um, at all the ingredients that you want to incorporate and almost work backwards. Um, if you have certain hero ingredients that have require a certain pH, of course, that's going to be um, a consideration when you're choosing your multifunctional antimicrobial. But I have found um, that I really enjoy using organic acids um, in combination with wetting aids. And I think for color cosmetics, it makes a lot of sense because you get um, better color trueness, a better dispersion of the pigment. And I like the fact that organic acids are never consumed. So they're constantly looking um, in the system ready to be activated if a need arises. Um, and I also like that organic acids can be used in many different chassis designs. So um, that would be an area that I would strongly encourage uh, our audience to look into. Um, they are very efficacious and very easy to use. Great, and I would just uh, add to that too, to review the stability profile of each mm -hmm. pigment you're using if you were looking at organic acids because these synthetic organic pigments, some of them have instabilities related to uh, pH um, as well as some of um, many, I would say, like anthocyanins or other materials that may contribute color um, can be pH sensitive, changing their color with uh, response to pH as well too. And we have another question here about the Tigo Film Star. Uh, do you have any study about the wrinkle reduction efficacy using this material? I'll, I'll take that question. Uh, currently, uh, we have not explored um, that area. I can say uh, that with our multi-bomb, we used our viscolid, which is also, it's a thickener, but it's also can be considered a somewhat film former. We did notice a wrinkle reduction um, or appearance, um, immediate appearance. So, uh, but that is something interesting that we uh, will probably look into. So thank you. Next question here we have, how do you increase coverage in color cosmetics on darker skin? Current solutions increase whiteness, which does not look great on darker skin. Yes, this is certainly a challenge in formulation. And I also um, welcome the Covallo team to, to add on to this as well as, of course, the higher pigment load, you can increase somewhat of the opacity, but we really used the zinc oxide and titanium dioxide in formulations to add a high degree of opacity. Titanium dioxide happens to be uh, several times greater in giving opacity than zinc oxide, but um, perhaps a solution is to trade some of the, you know, trade titanium dioxide for zinc oxide, uh, but then there are other, other concerns with formulation stability to look at when using zinc oxide, uh, kind of similar to the stability issues you might have when formulating a sunscreen as well. So. Um, that one is definitely a challenge. And maybe the folks at Evonik, do you have any other ingredients or thoughts on formulating uh, foundations for darker skin tones? For opacity, um, we do not. I have the same approach as you looking at zinc oxide, um, maybe even combinations uh, with TiO2. Um, but yes, that is definitely something that's still a challenge moving forward. Okay. Um, we had a question. Any suggestions for natural berries color and grapefruit colors in lip balm base? 
Um, unfortunately, so I'm going to speak specifically here. I don't know where the, the question, um, where th the person is located, but I would recommend you look at the list of permitted color additives that you can use in the region in which you're marketing the product to get started. There are a few um, anthocyanin type based pigments that can be used in the European Union. Um, if that's where you're located that you can look to. Uh, here in the United States, unfortunately, we do not have any natural um, anthocyanin or, you know, uh, berry fruit based colorants that are permitted here in the United States. So it, it's not, not, not any recommendations from the US, but there are a few things available in the European Union. So I would check the list of permitted colors. Okay, and let's see if there are any other questions that have come in. Is there any equal alternative for carmine? Um, carmine is a, a very unique shade. Of course, it's a, a beautiful blue shade of red. Um, unfortunately, there's not an exact match. You can look at other synthetic organic pigments in the red families and try to shade them with small amounts of, of blue, of course. Um, again, it goes to the use area of the cosmetic. There are certain restrictions for lip areas, certain restrictions for eye areas. So you'll have to um, consider the um, where you're using the product to, um, to consider what types of color additives you can use. So there is no 100% drop in, unfortunately, for carmine that, that I'm aware of that we can use in, in cosmetics. So, um, and another question just came in from, let's see here, Matt, does Viscolid MB contribute yield value along with thickening for mineral suspension? Good question. Um, it's, I don't think it's a traditional yield value. It really is compatible with natural seed oils and it does a, a, a wonderful job of bodying those systems all the way from, um, very thin liquids all the way to sticks. Um, but it is more of a traditional, um, stabilizer approach, I would think, but not a yield point. Okay, and another question that was submitted in advance, it says, we have seen pigments that would have a natural oil as a carrier, the dispersion begins to smell rancid over time, especially uh, even before it's open. So well, that's, that's not good. Is there a way to prevent this without using BHT or a synthetic, um, uh, especially vitamin E or rosemary and antioxidant blends are used? This is a common issue and we would like to avoid keeping lip glosses, lipstick, and foundations uh, from smelling. Yes, I, I think that's a real challenge in formulating natural, as many natural oils can be very prone to oxidation. And um, BHT is a really good way to, to prevent oxidation of materials. Vitamin E is, is somewhat effective as well. But I think you have to be careful when looking at the um, the selecting the oil that you're using. There are oils that are less prone to oxidation. So I would look at the profile of your oil that you're using to disperse your pigments and um, check the uh, specifications and the certificates of analysis for your oils as well to understand the parameters and determining whether or not your oil is prone to oxidation. And let's see, we've got one more ingredient or ingredient. Let's see where my mind is thinking about ingredients now because I have wrote, made myself a note. I want to get a sample of the the um, the visco lid and the film star. So that's my mind is on. Um, but here is another question that um, asks about biotech ingredients. Do you think biotech ingredients are uh, better and they have better in parentheses than natural? I'll maybe. Uh, I'll ask for the Evonics team's input on this after I, um, after I give my opinion. I think each ingredient should be evaluated on its own for its contribution and performance in the formula. Um, 
the source is, of course, a, important in determining sustainability. And that's another factor that we can, you know, look at for each individual component of the formula. So I wouldn't say that one is better than another. But again, here, I welcome the input from the Avonic team if they have any thoughts on this, too. Maybe one more parameter to to think about when you're talking about uh, different uh, biotech is not only the sourcing, but also the production methods. So uh, looking, for instance, at esterification, um, there is traditional metal catalysis, or you can do it enzymatically. Now, one of the benefits, or there's several benefits actually, um, much lower temperatures with enzymatic, uh, your um, overall active matter is higher, your color is lo lower, your odor is lower, and this is all due to a optimized uh, production. So it's not only about the starting, but it's but it's how you um, ha how you modify the natural materials too. So you have to look at the whole picture to get a, a clear understanding. Okay. And I think we'll go ahead and take one last question as we're running up here to the end of the hour. Um, we have a question here. Um, do you have efficacy tests for your ingredients? How could I get these if I'm choosing an ingredient, for example, a high performance ingredient? Well, in all of our uh, product uh, presentations, um, we spend a lot of time evaluating the efficiency in different applications, and we share all of our efficacy testing um, in different applications. So if you are interested in uh, learning more about our methodologies, um, I encourage you to go to Into Beauty. Again, these presentations are downloadable and you can investigate and on your own and, and then come back to us with um, your questions. So we would love to answer those for you. But in general, we supply all of our information or that high level of transparency in our market presentation. Great, thank you so much. I as a formulator, I really appreciate having access to all of that information to help me decide which uh, ingredients to use and how to put together my formulations. So I want to thank everyone for joining us here today in the webinar and for the team from Ivonic, uh, Brittany, Anna, and Aaron for the fantastic presentation. I look forward to um, getting my samples. <laughs> and so I'll be getting in touch after the presentation as well. Is there anything um, that uh, our attendees should, or anyone our attendees should contact afterwards to um, get further information if needed? You all can go to intobeauty.evonic.com um, and that's where you can access all of our information or our Email contact um, is evonicpc at evonic.com. Um, this contact information is also on our website as well as our um, Into Beauty platform for you all to access if you have questions. And I would also like to add that you can find Evonic on Covalo, uh, so you can sign up for your free account there as well, and we'll share the link with you in a follow up email. All right, thank you, everyone.